Gary Moore wasn't a comedian in the sense of the word, uh, he, uh, but he was a, one of the finest administrators I ever knew and how to work with people. I worked with him for eight years, and he only got upset twice. And none of it was at the crew or, or the cast. It was at the uh, commercial, uh, the commercial people, Chevrolet, uh, actually. Uh, the agency people didn't want him to do a sketch because they didn't feel it was uh, complimentary to a car, whatever that meant. And so he just said, he just ignored them. But he was, he, um, I wrote a sketch uh, called, uh, I just called it simply Songs. And what it was, was a, uh, uh, I took the old uh, gimmick of uh, miming to, a, to a, a record, and I took each record so it, the, the lyrics composed a story, like, like, kind of like, like an opera. So uh, it, it involved Derwood, Denise, uh, Gary, and uh, the, uh, the guitar player. Uh, and it started out with, you know, uh, I was dancing, oh, no. I was dancing with my sweetheart when it went to the Tennessee wall. When, and ding dong, goes to the door, opens the door, when an old friend I happen to see, and then Derby comes in with his hat, and he says, they called me Cuban Pete, I'm the king of the boogie beat, and I go boom, chicky boom, boom, chicky boom. I introduced him to my darling, and <laughs> to Denise Lorgan, and, and she goes, I want a tall, skinny papa. Vroom. I want a tall, skinny papa. Vroom. I want a tall, tall, a tall, skinny papa. And then, <laughs> and then the song, and so forth and so on. And, and, that's, and actually, um, I got $25 for it. It was the first, uh, <laughs> it was on television, and that's all I cared about. And I got fan mail. And they said, Gary, when are you going to do that again? And so forth and so on. And then the second one I did, uh, the uh, unit manager who handled the budgets for the show came to me and said, uh, Bob, is, is that, uh, that hole in the, in the door, is that absolutely necessary? I said, well, it's a speakeasy uh, era, so yeah, it's, it's kind of, you know, but why? You know, he said, well, it's going to cost $350. Well, I was getting another $25 for the script, so that was the disparity between writing and a good union, and that was the stagehands union, special effects and so forth. And they called it special effects to put that little hole in the door. But, uh, you know, Gary was, uh, he was fantastic. He, uh, he had the most interesting guests, asked the most interesting, he had Frank Lloyd Wright, he had all those people, and he asked the most interesting questions. And he was just extremely, extremely intelligent. He told me one time, uh, his son said, you know, Dad, I, when I grow up, I want to be exactly like you, normal. He said, can you imagine that? He said, last year I made $7 million, and he wants to grow up to be like me, normal. And that was Gary. And another thing he did, it was <laughs> around Christmas time. And he said, now, do people buy Christmas presents for themselves or for their children? So he said, we're going to find out. So he said, I have some two children, you know, backstage, and they don't know anything about this. And so I'm going to ask them to come out on the stage and pick what they would like. Now, one of these dollhouses uh, it costs about $750. It has, it's completely electrified, it has this, it has that, it's that, it's that, and so forth and so on. Everything down to this doll is $1.98. And then for the boy, it was various uh, different toys. So uh, the, uh, they let the, uh, the boy, uh, the girl come out first. And she looked, she looked, and she went over to the dollhouse, and everybody went, ooh, ooh. She went by it. She went here. She went there. She went there. She went there. And she picked up this little doll. And Gary said, why did you, uh, you pass the, the dollhouse? And, the, and why, why did you pick up this little doll? She said, because he looked like, she looked like she needed a mommy. 
Well, that's one little thing. And then the boy comes out. And so he, he goes around and he's looking and he's looking. And then he picks up a sled. So he said, well, I guess you're going to do a lot of, you know, sleigh riding and everything like that. And he said, uh, no. No, you're not? He said, no, I live in Florida. He said, well, wh wh why did you pick a sled? He said, well, maybe this year it will snow. Well, everybody, you know, just said, Gary said, well, maybe it will. And, then, and that was the segment. So it's true. We don't buy <laughs> for the children. We buy for what we think will be impressive, expensive, et cetera, et cetera.